All right, folks, looks like we are just about ready to get started. Again, this is Simon, and this is the first playoff match of the USTA Beginner Tournament of 2021. Uh, they might even be doing a second one this year, so uh, maybe not 2021, maybe the beginning of 21, 2021. Uh, so yeah, so we are ready to get going, and they are ready to play. I am ready to watch them. This is Aseric in white, Inaria in black. And this is the playoff match, the first playoff match we've had so far. So there is a double elimination bracket for the top three people. The first place person from each round robin group. So Aseric won one of the groups, Inaria won another group, and then Alpaca's Creed won the other group looks like we got a very quick start from these two players adjacent corners mirrored beginning this mirrored opening is very standard for uh, a lot of six by six play right now uh this this capstone placement pretty solid uh it allows for a capture to interrupt this road threat of white and at the same time, it interrupts that. It also starts creating a horizontal threat for black. And so it is that simultaneous uh, offensive and defensive move. Uh, we see that white is saying, all right, I see what you're doing here. Maybe once you do that capture, I'll come around and start placing behind you. So you can't make that horizontal threat. And so I can just keep going for my vertical. Pretty solid move. Uh, Good move there. So, uh, like I was saying, this is a double elimination bracket. So each of these players can lose twice. Uh, and if it, well, they can lose once and still win. Once you lose twice, you're out. So, uh, the winner of this will go on to face Alpaca. And then the loser of the Alpaca match will go against whoever lost this one. And then... Yeah, it sort of alternates. It's a double elimination bracket. If you're not familiar with that, uh, you can look that up and see what that looks like. So we do see Black starting to build around here, saying, all right, I acknowledge that you're going to build around me, but I can do the same thing and cut you off from building that in the future. Uh, White deciding to place a capstone now, uh, maybe coming across, cutting off this vertical threat from Black and creating a horizontal threat for white. Pretty solid play so far. Really no uh, wasted moves, as you would expect from the people who won their brackets. I know that Aseric, uh did, did sweep his group. He won every single match he played. Uh, I'm not sure about Inaria. I'll have to check that to see if Inaria is was in fact the um the uh, sweep as well so in area sorry forgive me as i look this up so yes four wins one draw um and so in area did draw against one of her opponents his her I i'm not quite sure so lucid tack was a draw in area and loose attack both uh one as white i believe and so that is what we're seeing there trav west won all of his games uh so this should be a, a pretty solid matchup as they are both are very strong competitors and so we see black deciding to place up above here this is a good move too because this is white potentially coming over and creating this horizontal threat and then black can come down and cut that off. Okay, so we do see the first tack threat of the game. White, a vertical tack threat. Black immediately cuts it off with that capstone capture. Now, it is typically not too great to make the first capture of the game. But if it is with the capstone, it is not so bad. Uh, the reason I say this is because captures with... Ooh, and, and then we get this white flat stone coming down here. Ready to come down for another tack threat hor uh, horizontal that time. 
Ooh, and then black moves this flat stone, captures over, isolates this capstone. So the capstone has nowhere to move in order to stay relevant in the game. This is excellent play from black right now. Really, really well done. Um, back to what I was saying a moment ago. <laughs> uh, captures, and I say this every time, every video, because I, I can't stress it enough. Captures with a flat stone on another flat stone aren't great because they create a liability because that piece can eventually be recaptured to create a, a stronger stack for your opponent. But if you capture with a capstone, it can't be recaptured unless you relinquish that piece in another time. So we do see white coming over and capturing this stack from E5 over to D5, uh, capturing this piece. This does allow black to capture down with the flat, wouldn't be too great, would just be a fill in, or to capture up with the capstone, which may result in a wall dropping here or here. Uh, it's, it's hard to say, but a capstone moving up and capturing this piece, I feel like is probably the best move in this situation. Okay, I was mainly just thinking about whether it would be better to leave behind a white flat or to carry the whole stack. And I'm not quite sure what is the better play in this moment, but we do see a wall come down. And if, uh, if black had left behind the white flat, a wall would not be able to drop there. So that is important to note. Now, another important thing to note is that if black places here to continue this road threat, that does give white's capstone an opportunity to come back in the game and not be isolated anymore. This is great play from these beginners. Uh, they probably aren't going to be considered beginners again after this tournament, just because, you know, it once, once you're in the playoffs of a tournament, it's hard to say you're a beginner anymore. And so they've definitely proven that they are a cut above the rest of the people who have competed here. Now, we do see Black deciding to build down here at E4, sort of make this sort of double-pronged connection in both directions to go make this vertical threat. I would not be surprised to see white place something here or here and eventually make a capture over. And so white does place there at C5. That is strong. I'm not sure how long Inaria has been playing, uh, Inaria currently in black. Uh, I believe they're fairly new, but I, I, I could be way off on that. Uh, Aseric, however, has been part of the community for quite a while. Uh, he did qualify for the tournament uh, based on, on skill level while he has been around for like, I think three years or something like that in the community. He has, um, he isn't at the skill level to disqualify him from the tournament. The, the way they were doing that was uh, you have to, I think, not win against Intuition Bot 50% of the time, something like that, was the uh, qualifiers that the USTA gave, so... And I think he was right at 50%. So it looks like, okay, so black starting to build down this vertical threat, drops a flat here. White responds with a flat at E1. Uh, this is here to block this threat. Uh, it's not so much an offensive move as it is defensive. Uh, it's definitely there to just keep that threat from developing. And I'm wondering what black is gonna do here in response. Black is gonna place on this side. So it's building this two-pronged threat so that black's capstone can come over here or over here to continue this threat in whichever direction. And so now a flat here can capture into both sides or what I kinda of like a little bit more is either placing here at B2 or placing here at F2. I like that better because it's not relying on a capture that's eventually going to be recaptured and that sort of thing. So I like that placing out and it starts moving towards a bit more of a horizontal thread as well. It gives that option. Uh, placing here at F2 would work. Uh, I like that and I'll, I'll explain why. So F2 and B2 worked better, I think, than F1 because placing here creates that opportunity. White would probably place there. Then you place here. Then white places here maybe. The new place here. Now, this creates sort of the opportunity to make this vertical threat, but also a horizontal one. That would be attack threat placing here, here, and here. B2 
because black smashes this wall, easy to miss because it comes up with this big horseshoe type shape. Very easy to miss that sort of threat. And so I think you'll, uh, you'll see a lot of those misses happen in these beginner tournaments especially. You see a lot of these games did not end in tenue, didn't end in flats, they ended because people missed road threats that were going on. Alrighty. And I was just given a special treat by my wife, and, and so I might take a bite of that here and there. Okay, so we do see a move from white making a capture. Now, bold to make this capture here, E1+, plus, that does sort of cut off that, um, that potential attack threat that was occurring. There was no attack threat at the time, but black has the opportunity to, again, place another piece and renew that same sort of half threat that they had going on. And they also threaten that stack at the same time. So placing it F2 right here would have been really good, I think, for black. Uh, but instead, they're placing above. I'm not quite sure what they were going for that one. Maybe they've thought about this horizontal threat now and are finally going for that. I liked placing it F2 a little bit better. Ooh, and then the white walls right here. White really does not want this black threat to go anywhere. So I can definitely see black placing here now. Now that this wall is there, that's actually nice for black. And I can say that because black is not going to be focused on this side of the board because they believe that this wall is in the way. So placing here and then placing here, continuing on, oh, they're placing above, makes it a little bit more obvious that they're going for that horizontal threat than, than the vertical one. So, uh, going for more of this misdirection of going down below, I think would have worked out a little bit better. But uh, this, this also still does fulfill the same purpose, if maybe a little less sneakily. Okay, white building around. Now, white's threat isn't completely dead here either. Okay, so we do see attack threat from black. White will probably see this tact threat. How they will respond is the interesting question. I can see them coming down with this flat here at B4. I would not be surprised to see that happen. Especially because they just placed there at B4, potentially anticipating that move. Or they were trying to go for their own threat vertically here. It would require a lot of captures and a lot of misplays from black, but it is a potential. So whether white sees this threat or not is the question. I think that they have seen the threat. Otherwise, they probably would have taken a move a little sooner than now. And so they're probably just debating on how best to respond to this. There is a phenomena in TAC that we refer to as capstone blindness. And that's when you miss a road threat because there's a capstone involved. And it happens and it's a real thing. It, I, I'm not sure exactly why that's a real thing and why it affects us so much. Probably because it's shaped differently than the rest of our pieces, something like that. I don't know, but it's definitely a real thing, and I suffer from it, as well as probably every player of TAC has suffered from it at some point. White definitely taking his time on this turn. Moving this wall, not going to work. Oh, and he misses the threat. White misses the threat and places here instead. Black takes the win. We do see that missed threat happen. Excellent play from Inaria there. Taking game one against Aceric. That was a great play. Smashing that wall a little on the sneaky side. Again, probably the capstone blindness that got to Aceric on that point. So... Great game. Well played, both of you. We'll see about game two happen in just a minute.
Let's see. Now Inaria as white and Asric as black. This should be a good one. And I will point out that Anaria did win as black in that game, in case you weren't paying attention. And white does have a slight advantage in 6x6 six tack. Black going immediately. Asterisk wants to immediately deviate. Now this is where I would say, as white, you would want to place here at C4. A flat or a capstone at C4 would be good. I do like the capstone there because it gives two opportunities to get into the game there. But I liked placing here at C4 better because it sort of just goes with the momentum of the game. Ooh, <laughs> that's a dirty, dirty move. White coming over and capturing right away. Now, typically not a great move to make, but <laughs> capturing isolates Black's capstone, uh, which is something that happened to White's capstone in the last game. So Asterix's capstone has been isolated twice now. Uh, this game and last game. So Inaria is really wanting to isolate Asterix's capstone early on. Now, I like that play. I like it. It's gutsy and it works. Um, and maybe uh, Trav West, also known as Asterix, will take a look at that uh, article up on the TAC Times about capstone placement. That is in the February issue, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and you can find the link to that on the Discord server and all that jazz. But uh, but yeah, and I, I, I did contribute to the, uh, the article. I was cited as a source, I believe, for all the tips on how best to place your capstone in the game. Uh, actually, that may have been the January. Yeah, that was the January issue. My bad. Anyway, back to this. Back to tech. So, we see... A placement here at d5, I I like that. I am a little interested in this diagonal approach here. Coming around it. I would have expected him to place here to get his capstone back in the game. Maybe make a hard cap and threaten this area. I, I liked placing here at d3 and then capturing over with that capstone a lot better than his previous moves. But uh, but we'll see what plan he has in store for us. He is building across, not letting white build upwards in sort of a vertical threat. But, I mean, he's got to be aware that white placing here at A3 does start to build this horizontal threat as well. So he's got to be watching both directions to make sure that that doesn't happen. And we do see it. Placing A3. And we do see that the momentum here is to actually go for horizontal now instead of vertical. So if black does notice that same thing, I would not be surprised if they placed here at D1 to cut that off, which would result in them placing at A4. Oh, so let's see if they place here at D1. Will D1 be the move? An area taking their time. Hmm. Maybe did not see that uh, vertical option, or that horizontal option, rather. Still pushing that vertical road threat. Because placing a D1 would have been a attack threat. Ooh, Black decides to move the capstone over. Oh, that is a gutsy play. Very gutsy. Moving the capstone over. Oh, man with nothing to capture on. Now, oh, there we see the hard capstone coming in to block Black's capstone from capturing. Excellent play. 
I like this. I like this play. This is solid, solid uh, attack playing right here. I'm really impressed with Anaria's skill level and decision making right here. Making great positions and really, really setting up for long term and making really good defensive and offensive plays on almost every turn. So really solid, uh, really solid tactics here. I will note that if Aseric does win here as black, that means they will have split both games. And because this is the playoffs and double elimination, that's not going to end there for their matches. They will have to do a blitz match where they play two games, where each game, each player has three minutes on the clock with a five second increment. And the winner of those Blitz games is the one who moves on. Now, where that gets tricky is if they split both of the Blitz games, they basically continue with pairs of Blitz games until one person comes out on top, which is crazy. Trust me, I've been there. I did, I think, three overtime matches with Apple Monkey Man a few years ago in our Blitz tournament, and it was nuts. Anyway... Back to the action, we see Black building up here at d6, starting to go for his own tag threat. So Black actually has a little bit of momentum here in that he can make the threat before White can make the threat now. Unless White decides to go for this horizontal threat. The horizontal threat placing here at d1 would cut off... Oh look, it's like, it's like they read my mind. It would cut off this vertical threat and also make a horizontal threat at the same time. And Asterix decided he wanted nothing to do with that and dropped a wall immediately. This does give White a little more time to start building out more threats for this vertical side. So building out here maybe at B5... At a5, at b6, a6, up there. a6 really wouldn't be a good one. But b5, I think, is the best move here. We do see the b5 get played. Now, how will black respond to that? Now, I'm interested because... Black could respond in a number of ways. They could decide to start playing off here maybe at e5 and start going for their own horizontal threat, capture up, something like that, or capture down, something like that. There are a number of different things that Black can start doing here uh, because the game really isn't decided yet. Both players have a pretty solid position. I do favor White's position more. Um, most of that because they do have that hard capstone in a very central location that is very strong and is very key to all of their road threats. And it's great. And it also blocks black from moving into their own road threats. So really solid position from white and also still really good position from black. So the game is not close to over yet, folks. Now, I am, uh, I am slightly biased in who to root for, so I'm not going to root for anyone in this game. I do, uh, I, I did have, my, uh, my wife was in this tournament. She played in group three, Aserix group. So, uh, so I could root against him. I've also known Aserix for a long time, so I could root for him. So uh, I won't share what I will be inwardly rooting for <laughs> in this match. I'll try to keep it unbiased. Uh, but I do just like a good tag game. 
I like to see a good match. So let's see what this turns out with. We do see black placing up here at b6. We do see a, uh, a blockage here. Now, will white, I was about to say, will white play at a6 or a5? a6 here. This allows black to, if black places a5, white can capture over a6 to make that attack threat. And we do see a message in the chat from Pluto the Fierce, a.k.a. Cassilius or Cacilius or something, something unpronounceable, <laughs> uh, saying that Inari is playing very impressively. Yes, Inari is playing impressively. We do see the wall come down from black, basically threatening to stop this whole thing. I imagine they're going to come over with that wall right now. And yes, they do. Now, what I find interesting is... Black's got this wall over here now. They can recapture this, free up a captive, something like that. White can also just make their own tact threat right now by capturing over here onto C4. I like that move. I like potentially not worrying about it, maybe dropping something here at B2 and then moving the capstone over, throwing that up, that sort of thing. Also moving over, that works also. Uh, this could get captured over, but then recaptured. Ooh. Once that's recaptured... This capstone does have the range to reach it and smash this stack. Whether or not they want to is another question, but it does have the range. And that's interesting to me because we may be seeing a long capstone throw at some point in the near future. And those are always really fun. Okay, so, I apologize, I am still consuming that nice treat that my wife brought me. So, I don't even know what it is, but it's it tastes nice, so I'm eating it. Um, Black's still taking his time deciding what to do here, which is smart, because there are a lot of options. They could ignore that stack and start going for something else. But really, Black's in kind of a tough position here because they can't go for a vertical road using this capstone. And any attempt at a horizontal road can just be cut off by this capstone or any of these pieces. So they're at a pretty strong disadvantage now. Before I was saying that I was slightly in favor of White in terms of positioning, right now White is way in the lead in terms of positioning. Black has a lot to do to catch up. I mean, white can even start building down here at E2 and F2 and start making their own threats for horizontal down below. A lot of options for white. Not too many for black. I'm not even sure what I would do here for black. Um, now, black can make some delaying moves. Maybe make this capture here to force something out of this capstone. Maybe make it move so the black capstone can come over. Not sure if that would work. They'd probably just start building across off to the side. Um, there is no threat currently, so that's nice. That works out in Black's favor. Doesn't have to stop attack threat at the moment. But he does have to stop an eventual attack threat and basically hope to get himself uh, to, to keep himself from being Tinue. And for those new to attack, Tinue is basically tax equivalent of checkmate. It's basically a forced win where uh, your opponent can't do anything to stop your eventual win. Uh, typically, we refer to it as that moment right when they can't do anything to stop it. But we also have the term road to Tinue, which is where like a sequence of five or six or even ten moves in one case I think I saw. They're all forced and lead straight to a, a win that they can't be stopped. So... We do see black drop a wall here, and that's threatening this stack. Unsurprising. 
if white decides to throw this stack down, spread it out, drop a white, drop, well, the bottom three pieces here with white on top, and then drop another one down that is attack threat, but this wall can come over and capture and retrieve two black friendlies. And that's probably what's going to happen right now. This wall is going to come over and capture, retrieve those two black friendlies, and cut off this, uh, this road thread at the same time. Now, with that being said, what will white do in response? Will white throw up this capstone to smash it? If they do, they no longer have attack threat, but they still have a strong position that they retain. And they can further isolate black's capstone by potentially moving this white flat out of the way. I do like that. I think black is hoping, is thinking of capturing this, but I think that it ultimately does still work out for white if white makes that stack smash on the wall. If they don't make the smash on the wall, I think that it could work out pretty well for black. But I think that that is a little bit of wishful thinking. Oh, or white can also start building horizontally over here. Like a lot of options, like I said, for white, black is at a severe disadvantage in this game right now in terms of positioning. And part of that was, um, let's see, what was that move? It was back up here at move nine. And we'll go back to move nine real quick, where we see black moving the capstone over to get the capstone back in the game, but basically lost a move to do that. And so excellent play from in area so far to force some less than stellar moves from black. Okay, I did not think of using that particular move, using the flat on d5 to come over and capture that. I didn't think about that. I was thinking mostly about this uh, wall coming over. Now here's where I can see, let's see, I can see just placing here at e4 to make attack threat. And then this stack would have probably partially come down to cover up this piece. And then you get a number of, of, of back and forth plays here that eventually lead to white doing okay. White could also play here at B2 to sort of cement this. So once they do finally move up, they can keep that threat, but instead they're gonna build for that E4, for that horizontal road threat. I wonder what black is going to do here. I'm assuming black does not want to capture this and give this capstone a lot of room to move around with that, such a tall stack. We do see three friendlies under here. He's got to do something about this. I mean, he could just place it at four and delay that. Ooh, he moves the capstone up.
Okay, sorry about that, folks. I had a technical issue with my audio, but we are back in the game. Uh, let's go back in a couple moves to see what's going on here. Okay, so we see the we see white place here at C6. The wall immediately come over. What I was saying is placing down here at B2 or placing up at B6 might be nice to move this capstone over and make a threat in that way. Uh, we do see white decide to play over here at A6. I'm not quite sure why. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And then black deciding to play around it. And that's where we are at this point. Thank you, Pluto the Fierce, for pointing out my audio issues. Uh, so we do see B6 placed next, which I like because that can be turned into attack threat just by moving this whole stack uh, under the capstone right on over here to B4. That would make attack threat. Uh, you would expect this to come over or this wall to come over onto B6 after that point. White does not have to worry right now because there is no current tack threat for black. Uh, black is still blocked by their own wall and they, they can't really change that at any point. As soon as they change that, white can make their own change by dropping their own wall or something like that. So I don't think white has anything to worry about in terms of that at this point. If they move their whole capstone stack over, that works. But it might give this capstone opportunity to come in and do something else. Um, it's hard to say. White can also, because they know they have the momentum here and they don't have to defend against anything black is doing yet because they have that option later on. They can start building their own horizontal threat down here, maybe at D3, and just keep going that way. White going for a wall. Now, this wall positioning is good. And the wall positioning is good because it drops a wall here, is able to interrupt this threat, but it's good because it also has an opportunity to recapture a stack that has a friendly captive underneath. And that can then be used to basically increase your flat count. And so the uh, the current flat count on here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's ten to ten right now. Uh, white has basically a plus one advantage at the moment. Ooh, okay, so we see white come up with their own flat. Now that's interesting. And the reason it's interesting is because if black wants to capture this, they have to do so with one of their own flats, knowing that this, this wall can immediately recapture it. Ooh, I liked that. I like it. And it also keeps white's flat away from black's capstone. Uh, so they can't suck that cap that that flat up. I like this. This is this is strong play, stronger than I expected from an area. And granted, I haven't watched any of an area's game, so that's probably why I wasn't expecting an area to play so well. Hmm. I am liking this position though for white still. Black has a lot of ground to make up in order to do anything here. I do think if black doesn't do anything up here, okay, and they don't, they place at D3 to stop this horizontal threat from happening and potentially to come over here and recapture this. This is where I like B2 for white. It's a bit preemptive uh, because if black comes over, if they recapture here, they still have this B2 down here that they can use. And they still maintain that vertical threat the whole time. But then they also don't relinquish this area to black 
because they have that sentinel ready at b2. Instead, going over here, e2. Not a bad choice. It is interesting, though, because of this stack and having the ability to throw it down and cover up this spot, it could be tempting for black to have later on placed something here to stop that from happening. Um, and then that could have been thrown as sort of a sneaky threat, but uh, that would have been a lot, of, a lot of forward thinking there to get that to work. Black building here at e3, I'm not really sure what the motive is behind that. It is... Okay, so we see f2, so we do see a horizontal threat now moving d1 plus to d2 does create a horizontal road. Now, would we see e3 come down? Potentially. If e3 does come down... Um, you could see d1 come up, maybe? Or no, you'd see f2 come over. f2 coming over might work. Or honestly, just placing again here e3 to come back down. I think probably placing an e3 is, is probably the better option there. Yeah, I do like that. But what will Inaria decide to do here? That is the question. Yeah, I, I do see e E3 is working out best. There is no tank threat from black. White doesn't have to worry about that. The flat count is in white's favor and white has a number of plus flat moves at their disposal. Um, and so that ultimately I think works out in their favor as well. So yeah, I don't see, I don't see any problem with that. Okay, placing an F3 not quite sure what they're going for with that. I feel like E3 would have made a lot more sense, but uh, I may not be seeing what they are seeing. Black placing here to recapture this, this stack makes a lot of sense. Hmm. Thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. What could white do here that is particularly sneaky? What could they do? They decided to capture up, and that is attack threat. Capturing up d1 to d2 does make attack threat by throwing this stack down. Ooh, and then black captures over. That makes attack threat for black. I 
feel like that move might have been the capturing up from D1 to D2 is a bit of a blunder for white and gives black a little bit too much room to, to work here. Uh, this, this wall sure does stop that and threatens to recapture this, but I imagine we're going to see black move this stack somewhere where this wall can't get to it. Potentially throwing it, dropping one black here and dropping the rest right here at B2. It is important to note also the time, asterisk down to two minutes, an area at five and a half. And this is a 15 minute game with a 10 second increment. Very interesting move. Just moving the top three pieces up It, uh... Ooh. Okay, that's attack threat for white. Black's got a... Ooh, wow. And it's very nearly attack threat for black also. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is starting to get, uh, get tricky here. So black's got to do something here to stop this horizontal threat. And if he moves the capstone down, that would do it, but would also hurt his horizontal road chances. He could move these down and capture here onto A3 or B3, but that would also hurt his horizontal road chances. So he's got to think about it, but no matter what he does, he does have to stop this from happening. And dropping a wall here would not do it because this is a hard capstone and it can smash it. Oh, one of the plays that he can do that works out for him is take this whole stack, pick it up, drop one black, and drop the other three pieces here. That stops this horizontal road threat and creates his own horizontal road threat at the same time. I feel like that is a pretty solid move, at least looking one move ahead. Uh, I'm not looking more than that at this moment. Um, but he decides to go for the capstone instead. Ah, uh, yes, if he had done, if he had thrown this over, it would have been a Tinue move for white. So yes, probably a good idea that, uh, that he did not do that. And instead we see the capstone come over, making itself a hard capstone. And this is where... Ooh. Interesting, so white moving there, white throwing that, that stack down creates a horizontal threat again with white. Now, black likely wanted to throw this stack down eventually to create a road vertically, but not going to be able to do that because he's got to interrupt this horizontal threat. Now, what I like here is probably for black, I, I liked placing here at C4 better. Um, because it gave the option of moving this capstone up there to interrupt. Uh, so this is attack threat for black, horizontally. Uh, placing wouldn't do it because this stack can move over and, and throw that top piece over and, and cover. But, oh, yeah, white did have a win there. <laughs> black forgot that that was, uh, that, that was there and threatening the road. So... And I forgot too. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so black moved over. White decided to play there to go over this horizontal threat. Black moves up to make his own horizontal threat. 
but then at the same time forgot that White can just toss this over for the win. And that is the game in Area 1, both games of this match. So Inaria goes on to play Alpaca. Now, great, great game. Both of these games were great. Well played to both players. Uh, very impressed with Inaria's playing. Never seen Inaria play before. And I was overall just very impressed by it. Well done. I uh, don't know how, how long an area has been playing, but they, uh, they they definitely have started to figure some stuff out. So that was that was well played. Uh, next up, we've got um, an area versus Alpaca, like I was saying. And uh, that's going to be a tough one to schedule. I know that for sure, because I think Alpaca's in Australia. So hopefully I will be around at whatever time they decide to play. And I can record that and stream that and do all that fun stuff. Uh, for that match and yeah so I believe that is it and for those of you watching on Twitch check out the description or whatever for all the links and resources about TAC including the TAC Discord which is where you'll find all of the active players and where we discuss pretty much everything about TAC all the active discussion takes place on the Discord and then we have some secondary stuff occasionally like once a month on the subreddit and then if you're watching on YouTube, you can check out the description, and I've got the links there. And if you're watching some other way, I don't know how you've done it, but get that camera out of my house. And that being said, thanks for watching, have a great day, and happy tacking.